I really, really loved Young Miami in Megan's interview on Carisha, please. Girl, let's talk about it. Y'all know what time it is, I got the black bean neck on. So, yes, I, I thought I seen the trailer of Young Miami interviewing Megan Thee Stallion on her show on Revolt. I was like, the, her podcast. <laughs> I was like, okay, I am here for this. I watched the um, the interview she did with JT and it was really, really good. And Santana was a part of it too. And I was like, this is actually working for Young Miami. Now, we talked about this podcast in a little bit in depth on um, Patreon. But this recent interview, I am just loving how Megan is. Now, there was definitely some, some moments and definitely some things that uh, Meg talked about without talking about. And I wanna talk about some of those things. Let's just start off the good. The energy was really, really giving. Um, you can tell that Carisha, <laughs> Young Miami, is a little bit nervous like Megan is. Megan is a force. Say what you want to say about Meg. Say what you want to say about her. You know, her last album that she put out, just put out, or whatever. Not selling that much, or whatever. Megan is really solidifying herself as a girl who's going to be here for a minute. She's extremely talented. She can dance. I mean, there's no denying that she can rap. There's no denying that she writes her stuff. There's no denying that she is extremely talented. And considering all the things that she has experienced losing her parents, um, losing loved ones close to her, and having to restructure like friendships and stuff and like, hey, these folks, you know, they ain't good for me. And the whole situation with Tory Lanez, like she's been able to push through. And I and I don't want to applaud her for doing that because I don't think someone who's experienced as much harm and stuff as Megan Thee Stallion should be able to push through and keep on going. All of that that doesn't mean anything. Uh, but I just think she's here. She's here to stay. Like she's extremely talented and seems to be like committed to this. And this interview showed me that. This interview showed me everything that I needed to know to continue to be a fan of Megan Thee Stallion. I loved, when, let's get to the real like the, the real stuff. I loved how, you know, they, now, Carisha, Young Miami, I'm about to tug on your wig a little bit. It did look sickening. Both of y'all wigs look amazing. I wonder where y'all filmed this at. I wonder if y'all filmed this in Atlanta. Or was it in Miami? I feel like it was in Atlanta, um, but I couldn't really tell the background. But girl, y'all were filming because it was daytime in the background and it was nighttime, and it was really it was it was cute. So um, I love how she answered the question about her song Plan B. Young Miami asked her like, "What is Plan B? What did that mean?" And we all know, we all been speculating that Plan B is a diss to Tory Lanez, like and. The, her answer was just so clean. It was so precise. It was that girl. She was like, you know, it's a nod to like these men. I'm not going to be stuck with you. I'm not going to be a baby mom. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be feeling you. Like if it's not giving, skedaddle. And I'm like, this was the best way to come out and talk about like, you can tell that Megan is media trained. You can tell that Megan is very calculated about, and not in a bad way, because some people are over calculated, but Meg is very intelligent to the way that she answers her questions. It is not giving no room for error. Like you're not gonna take any mess, but people will take mess from it. I loved how she answered this question. And I love the conversation that she had about, you know, what do you do if you have to, you wanna work with another girl and you know, somebody ain't feeling that person and, what, like, and they got drama with them, and but you want to, you know, do some stuff, whatever. And I love how Car Carisha, Young Miami, answered this question. She said, if anybody crosses, you know, JT, it's a no, it's a chop. And I and I respect that. Uh, but, you know, Megan reiterated said, no, like, what if it's not, like, that? I understand that. That's a definite. But what if it's somebody, like, you're not really, really friends with? And Young Miami was like, oh, no, like, girl, if it's some petty stuff, because... You can tell that the wheels were turning when Young Miami and Young Miami was like, oh, okay, girl. Yeah, like, if it's some petty beef or whatever, like, girl, I'm just not, I, I ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. And we know that that's coming from, you know, Nicki Minaj being upset with Megan Thee Stallion doing a song or doing whatever with Cardi B. We can see that, like, Nicki started to spiral after that. Like, girl, she was not, she wasn't feeling that at all. And that kind of, like, started the beginning of that beef and the shots and stuff that Nicki Minaj was you know, was was putting out about Megan Thee Stallion. And 
Megan is like, girl, I'm here to make music. I love making music. Now, we all remember, you know, some years back when, um, because that was one of my favorite videos. It was so funny. When Megan was in, like, you know, she was doing an Instagram Live with Nikki, and it was just really, really cute. It was really, really fun. That's what I enjoy. Like, I love to see the rap girls, like, praise each other. I love to see it, and I was, like, very excited about, you know, Nikki and Megan having some type of relationship, some type of friendship. But, you know, that went, you know, sideways. But I never forget what Megan said. You're going to make me go write some shit. Like, Nikki's eyes went up. Like, Nikki's, like, she felt like that she was, you know, real friends with this girl. And we've seen Nikki over and over um, with other rap girls. Like, you know, kind of, the way she has her claws on them a little bit, it's kind of like, it's very, very weird to me. She did the same thing with Bia. She's like, I don't let everybody in my stuff out. But you did that song with that white girl. Like, you did that with that white girl who's been literally doing uh, blackface. Like, girl, like, girl, are you serious? Like, you do music with anybody as long as you get a hit or something from an or check. Like, that's not played. Let's not play like that. So, we see that this energy with Megan and um, Young Miami, it was like on another level. Like they were, of course, flirting with each other. Like, you know, girl, I be top, you be a bottom, da 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 da. And I loved it. I, I, I don't mind the rap girl is like playing around with bisexuality and all the other stuff. Like, girl, yeah, I like girls and da 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 da. It was interesting how comfortable Young Miami was with sharing that she has experience with girls. She's had a threesome with girls and stuff, and she likes it. And she said she feels way more comfortable like when she's with women. She said like it's just like we just enjoying each other. Now, what's funny is there is some research behind that. There is some studies behind. Um, how like sex for women is with with men is it don't be given. I, look, I, that's what they say uh, because a lot like the way Young Miami described when she is intimate with men, it is like a performance. You have to think about all these things. Like she basically was saying that men gossip after they've had been intimate with women to go back and tell their homeboys like, oh yeah, da da da, it was giving da da da, or it was giving was slow. And it's like men gossip a lot, like. Straight men, like, y'all gossip more than anybody. Like, everybody gossip to some level. It's not like a woman thing. It's not a man thing. It's not a gay thing. It's just people gossip, people gossip. That, that happens. And, but the way that she described it, like, she had to overperform and it's what, and it seemed like it wasn't about her. And a lot of women have talked about, like, they, like, this, the, the, in, the sex and stuff. It's not about them being fulfilled, it's about the man. And that's a part of patriarchy, and I'm glad that they were able to have that conversation. And she said she felt so comfortable, she feels so comfortable. You know, she, when she's with the girls, she's like, the girls be really, they be in two, they be just, girl, what you feeling? You better, you, are you on squirt? Are you, what's, what's going on? Because we we here to fulfill each other. And I love that. Now, young Miami, I'm at the tug on your wig. I'm at the tug on the wig because as you are experimenting with sexuality as you should, it's quite funny and it's kind of like, girl, it's a little crazy that you, it's a little interesting that you feel so free to say that, but when the conversation came up about, you know, your son playing with Barbie dolls or possibly being queer or gay or whatever, you would, you may mention that you would beat him and you would pop him or whatever, like you would do whatever it is to keep your son from being gay. And I'm just wondering, do you still think that same stuff? Because a lot of folks don't, like, people who have kids don't understand. Like, I had a conversation with my therapist. Shout out to me for being a therapist. Oh, my God. Y'all have no idea. It's been, it's been some time. And we talk about how much harm, like, black queer folks experience from their parents. And it's not necessarily all of their parents' fault, but it's them trying to live a, a life, a Christian life. And it's just, like, they want to instill these, um, install these morals and stuff they've learned from Christianity. And it's just like, girl, y'all gotta let some of that stuff go. Um, and you end up creating a toxic, um, unhealthy environment for a child who is queer or, you know, trying to find themselves. So, like, I, I, like I, I'm glad that people are having conversations about this because, girl, some of these parents, y'all gotta know, like, stop raising your children to be heterosexual. I know that's a lot for y'all, but just raise your kids. Raise your kids to be able to determine what they want or whatever. Like, it's just a real thing. It's, it's a real thing. I'm not going to get in depth too much 
on it because I know I've been pissing some of y'all off all week, girl, with my back-to-back -back, um, <laughs> videos about some stuff that y'all ain't feeling. I've been seeing the numbers y'all is upset, but y'all be okay because this is just the energy and the information I need to put out that's on my heart and on my spirit. But I really enjoyed this interview. I really enjoyed this conversation. And shout out to Megan and, you know, Young Miami for this, you know, this conversation. And, like, them just back and forth, like, the energy was just really giving. Um, Young Miami shared that she was a little bit nervous about um, her. She's like, I feel like she didn't like me. And then they talked about how, you know, fans make things up and how sometimes it's, it's like, you, you, they don't, she doesn't feel, Young Miami doesn't feel like she can be herself online without folks criticizing her. And Young Miami has talked about this on this interview, and she's also talked about this on an interview with JT. And I just want to say that, Young Miami, it's not that you can't be yourself. You can tweet and be, like, I get what you're saying. Like, I, I definitely, let me tell you, I get 100%, her and Megan, when you see negative comments and stuff, you see so many people say negative things that she's like, oh my gosh, like, don't nobody like me. Because people say that all the time, like, oh girl, the girls do not like you on Twitter. The girls do not, they ain't here for you. They drag you on Twitter. I'm just like, do you see how many people really mess me? Like, I have to really take myself out of that. That's how I deal with being online and dealing with criticism and all that for folks who ask me. Because there are a lot of people who up with me. There's from 1,400 to 1,500 people subscribe to my Patreon each and every month. Each and every month. There's people who see me. I was at the gym and this woman had spoke to me at the gym said, I love your videos. I get stopped all the time by people who love my content. And that's what I appreciate. I'm like, these people watch my videos they, they are, they've been following my journey for the longest. And sometimes you have to remove yourself from that. Like, there are some people who are not going to like. There are some people who hate watch or whatever. And I just try my best not to get consumed by these folks. Because they would love for you to be consumed by and feel like everybody doesn't like you. But I'm like, girl, if everybody online didn't like me, with so many people who did not like me, I wouldn't be able to have a successful career online like I do. I wouldn't be able to have the opportunities and things that I've been having. So it's just like, girl, that's what you have to dig into. I'm so glad that Megan shared that. But like, girl, when she went to Japan, she went to all these places. She's like, the folks were messing with her. Like, they were rapping the songs. They were knowing the songs because they messed with you. Like, girl, you've been able to sell music, do tours and stuff because a lot of people love you, Megan Thee Stallion. So I love that. That was really, really good. And I feel like Carisha needed that uh, because she talked about, I'm glad that she opened up about, you know, her talking to her cousin, she'd be feeling down and all that other stuff. It made me think about me as a person. And one of my faves on Twitter talked about how sometimes like they're the person that everybody calls and everybody talks to them um, about their problems and all the other things. And they're never concerned about how they're doing and how their day is. And I feel like that's me. Like, girl, it'd be so much. I feel like I'm a therapist for everybody. That's why I'm so glad I'm into therapy now um, because I need it. Because I'm like, girl, I don't feel comfortable even sharing how my day is because y'all give me so much. If I tell y'all that I'm broken and whatever I'm going through, y'all gonna be like, the world is ending. So I kind of like, you know, I needed this for my own reasons and I trust a professional to be able to give me the advice and listen to me. But yeah, Young Miami revealed that she um, tried a therapist after her uh, baby father um, passed away, but she said it just really didn't do anything for her. But I also want to just tell her, like, it, it's a process. It takes time. Like, even when I was talking today, it did make me a little bit teary-eyed and I started, you know, started to think about the things that happened in my life and all the, you know, stuff that I've experienced in the last year or whatever. I did feel it, but I didn't let it out. But girl, next session, I might. And that's okay. That's okay. And I'm glad that Megan was like, girl, it's okay to cry. It's okay to let it out. I was just so, beyond this, them like going back sexually or whatever, like the energy of them just caring about each other and loving on each other was such a beautiful thing that asked me. It raised my credit score, girl. It gave me another $20,000 off my loan. My student loan. Come on, Joe Byron. <laughs> so I'm loving this, this podcast. Um, and I'm hoping that this is a new thing and it continues. Like, let's be honest. Young Miami is like, when she speaks, you can tell she hate. I hate repeating myself. Like, I hate doing introductions. I hate doing all of that. But somebody had joked and made a mention and said that um, Young Miami is going to be the new Oprah. And, you know, I thought they kind of knew they was kind of joking and, and Young Miami reposted it. But I can see that Young Miami can be a better version of Oprah, like specifically speaking to black and brown folks 
who are consuming black content. Like, that is some real stuff. Like, y'all sitting there having conversations and y'all talking. Now, I love when the, the um, rap girly is coming, they talk about misogyny. And I think she talked about the whole thing with Future. And she couldn't be as honest because the song with Future did not really do those much numbers. Didn't do that much numbers. But, like, they talked about how they were kind of scared to do it or whatever. But, girl, Megan, extremely talented. Young Miami, extremely talented. Like, this was really, really cute. Like, I love content like this. So, I hope, if you haven't seen the interview, you haven't seen Carisha, please. Girl, I didn't type it in on YouTube. It's really, really good. I think the video has... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's got like a million views already. Like, girl, shout out to Young Miami. Shout out to everybody who ever put this stuff together. Y'all doing a damn thing. I love it, girl. I can't wait to see some more episodes, some other folks y'all talking to. Keep it coming because y'all feeding me good content that I need. Okay? Period.